Everybody in the back hear me? All right, all right. Okay, so I'll start off. Uh, thanks for all for coming out this morning. Nine o'clock, not bad, but we're all here. Um, today, in the, in the hardware management work group, we have the ability to influence the industry, right? We have the ability to say, hey, through a profile, through a, a paper that we develop, right, please go towards, you know, go towards this direction. Uh, and we're going to start to see that, especially with the Redfish stuff coming up, right? So I think it would be really great for you to actually be able to take that design, that profile, and then be able to try it out so that you, so that you know that we can cancel that. Yeah, try it out for real life. See if it actually works. So that when, you, when the final profile is built out, then you've actually got real legs, real miles on it, right? So my name is Chris Austin. I work at IBM. I'm a senior software uh, manager there, and I work on the OpenBMC project. Um, there, your BMCs that you have out there today, you have a, a variety of choices. Uh, you can actually just go and have somebody do it for you, right? Um, the outsource kind of way. Um, there's some pros and cons to that. You can have it done yourself. One of the most, the, doing that is the, probably the most expensive way about going about doing it, where you're hiring all the developers uh, to write the code, like the infrastructure part of the code, and then as well as you know, the business logic, this, the value add that your company put on top, right? Um, we do that at IBM, and we recognize that, geez, wouldn't it be nice to be able to work with the open source communities out there to actually uh, to solve that problem? Because there is a chunk of code that your company is working on, that your company is working on, that your company is working on, right, that is being done duplicate. All of the base infrastructure parts don't have to be done all the time. Right. It's weird. So... And I think when you look through the pros and cons and stuff, one of the most important things you did, when, when it comes to the open source community, more eyes on the code, more eyes on the design makes a better uh, product overall, right? So, yes, haven't I heard about OpenBMC before? Yes, there is two different OpenBMCs today at 9 to 9.30. We're going to talk about the OpenBMC in the top left. From 9.30 to 10, uh, we're also going to hear about the Facebook's version of OpenBMC. So the goal of the OpenBMC project, this is as close as I can to differentiating as, as much as I can right now, but so it's the OpenBMC project, it's free open source software Linux distribution, right? And it's designed for the embedded system. Um, let's talk about the OpenBMC project as a community. You go out on the floor today, you're going to see companies, IBM, Google, Rackspace, all say OpenBMC project code is on that AST chip. I, I went to the mailing list. Um, over, was over 120 email addresses on the mailing list. You, know, you chop off the at sign and everything to the left of it, and you look, and you just parse it down. 40, 40 different domains of people from around the world are actually monitoring and looking in at what's going on in the, the community mailing list. I think one of the reasons why we have such interest in the OpenBMC project is because we put code back. So the U-boot code, the kernel code, and any repository out there that we have taken uh, and made enhancements to, bug fixes to, make it work for the chips that we support, goes back upstream. Okay. That's, I think that's one of the most important things that we do because we're staying up to date now, right? So right now we are on U-Boot. There's a, a 20, October 2016, I think we're on. Um, it, shortly, we'll go to the 2017 version. And why we are going there? Well, because all the code that we made changes to to support the A-Speed, ASC 2400, ASP 2500, is all been upstream, right? A kernel, 4.10. The latest out there, 4.10. Up to date. Yocto, the latest Yocto version out there is 2.2. We have a developer right now doing the transfer from 2.1 to 2.2. So the, getting a little more technical details, the, the, the code 
build is built off of, of Yocto. Yocto is great because you actually have the ability to go and point at repositories, which one you want. You can say this is the this Python package I want, this Python package I, doesn't, I do not want. And Yocto did a really good job of teaming up with the open embedded community and uh, creating it so that you can pick apart. Is what's the, what's the big factor when you look at an embedded systems, right? It's just limited flash space. We are, we are space constrained. There's no hard drive on a BMC. Um, the way our, our uh, processes talk to each other is going to be through Dbus. Um, the users talk through REST or IPMI. So the processes communicate Dbus. Users, you can go to via REST into the BMC or you can uh, do via IPMI. And it's kind of neat because what the developers did was um, made a map, an introspection map. So basically, you're, you write the code for the Dbus part, and then automatically it creates the REST interface. So you don't actually have to write the REST code and the Dbus code. It's all written, you know, we do it for the Dbus, and it does it for the REST as well. It's Dbus, what's Dbus? Well, I'll tell you what it's not. So when you're developing uh, your systems, you have lots of different processes running all at the same time, right? When you create a sensor uh, that's monitoring fan, um, if you didn't have a IPC uh, tools, then you would have to write the code yourself uh, that communicates to the fan uh, monitor management software, right? Um, now think about that. So if your company did it that way, do you think that the next company along the road is actually going to be doing it the exact same way? Right? Probably not, which means then you have to, if you want to build a community that builds upon the, the, the OpenBMC project, it's like, shoot, man, I, I have to learn that piece and that piece, and it's really hard to be plug compatible. So what Dbus allows us to do is have a well-defined interface that says, hey, I am a fan sensor. Great. And I'm going to broadcast on the Dbus values that you tell me that you care about, right? So you'll have a file, you can say the minimum and the maximum, and then some other part, it just listens. And it listening, and you can replace that part, and all of a sudden the fan comes on and alerts that there's an issue, maybe it's broken, maybe it's going way too fast for it to really be on, and uh, then, you know, there's, a, there's the fan management part that can just listen and discover the signals on and then deal with that problem. Um, and the cool thing is, is like if your company actually has a, you know, a better fan management controller, all you're doing is replacing that one little part, right, with your business logic part. So really plug compatible. Um, there's already bindings for Dbus, so you can write your code in C, C++, Python, and you don't have to actually write the real deep down dirty stuff. It's available to you already. And uh, Dbus was designed for System D, and System D allows it to, uh, to do the system recovery, the process recovery, and restarts and things. All right. Um, so this is a little bit of what Dbus is like. Uh, if you create an interface for a, a warning threshold sensor, what our code will do is then create automatically you know, your maximum and your minimum values for that threshold. Right? If you have, a, if you have an, uh, an inventory item, you get the, the true data, or the VPD, as well as a presence of true or false. So we're really trying to make it easy for everyone. There's, so th I'll talk about two different ways that we're trying to make it easier. One is an XML file. So if you, uh, you don't always have to write the C code, right? You could actually just go and write all the, all the lines between the BMC and what's it connected to, the chips that are on the system, um, in a, kind of like a manifest file. And then it, the code will take it, munge it, and then pre create the, the Dbus code for you. Uh, you can put your IPMI into DIDs in there as well. All right, so here's an example of it. So this is a Maxim 31785, which is a fan controller device. Uh, and so all we really do is we say, like, hey, the kernel has an HWMON sensor for it. And so that's what we just want to use to, to, do the, to do the interactions with the kernel. Um, here I'm defining a warning high and a warning low. That's it. Well, I can do the pointer thing. And you're saying, warn me, alert, if there is a one below 1,000 or if the fan speed is above 10, or yeah, 80,000. And the other interesting part is you're not limited to, you could actually have critical highs and lows as well. In this example, there's not, which means they'll only get alert of warnings. And so the, the management software could then do whatever needs to get done. Okay, the next is uh, 
How many times when you write code uh, and the design is written and then you wait six months later, is the design, or six minutes later, is the design actually adhering to what the code says? Um, sometimes not, right? And so how do you solve that problem? You solve it by actually writing the, having the design write the code for you. By doing that, uh, we have, by, with, uh, with YAML, right, we were able to have the, the system defined, and then from here, actually it creates the DBus interfaces as well. So here you have, this is like a, this is a part of an event log uh, YAML file descriptor, right? And you're saying, hey, there's a property called, oh, there's a property called ID, it's gonna be a uint32 value, and here's the description of what it is. Here's a timestamp, it's gonna be 64 bits, it's a description of what it is. And you know, it's on and on and on and on and on, right? But that's how the code is actually created. So if the developer wants to make a change to that spot, then the, the code that's out there on GitHub today is a direct reflection of what the code is running on the system. Um, a couple times we've heard that, like, hey, it would be great to be a, have a standard and stuff, right? To be able to code to it. Uh, so the REST interface, you know, has a different, different types of uh, schema parts. You can do a slash and it'll show you the path below um, where, you're, where you're asking a question on the URL, right? You could do a list and you'll see all the properties. Enumerate, you'll see all the properties of everything below it um, and the children and children and children of it. Attribute, if you just wanna see one property. Action, you wanna call a method, right? You want that particular interface allows for uh, a method to be called. You just, you run the action, the method, and you're done. And if you don't know what it is, then you call schema, and schema will show you all the methods, the input and the output parameters, as well as the description of what they are. All right, example, because it's way too long. <laughs> all right, so here it is. Here's a URL. You just go there to the BMC, XYZ, open BMC project inventory slash. Your slash is you want to see what's below it. So here it is, below, it, the, the curl comes back and says below inventory is a system. Great. So then you could go query that and say what's below system? And, uh, and so on and so forth. And so eventually you could even go to see the inventory of the chassis of the motherboard of CPU zero. Without the slash, you just get the properties. And so here they are. This is the fru data that came back from you know, a, a CPU that we had in, in test. So let's try it out, man. Let's, let's, let's use it in real life. Well, guess what? You don't actually have to go implement, you don't have to put it on your hardware. You don't have to get an EEPROM burner and flash it on if you don't want to. You could actually use it without hardware. Wait, how do you do that? Through the magic of QEMU, of course. So QEMU, uh, we use that with a, um, a, a model that we created as well. And, uh, and here it is, right? Like, this is me on my laptop, running Ubuntu, and I got the, the console from the, the, uh, the BMC, and there I am. I uh, issued a, a curl command to, to that uh, port, and I also, I could SSH in, and we have a console off of a different port, and I could SSH in and actually get the, uh, to the, the BMC console that way as well. So even without hardware, you could actually try out the BMC if you'd like. Uh, we have a series, you know, we have a bunch of developers that are actually working on the code. We actually, we also have a bunch of developers that are writing automated test cases. So every single commit that an open BMC developer pushes up for review goes through a whole series of tests, right? Uh, the Jenkins server will run, it'll do the compile of that commit on the code base, it will run any unit tests that are inside the repository, and then it will use QMU, and it'll actually start a system up and run the test suite. Um, so when we created this, I really told the, <laughs> I told the test developers, like, hey man, we don't have time for you guys to be testing every single one in manually, right? Let's use the manual for what you do, what you really want to do, and try to break it. This here is, I want you to automate all the code so that all the interfaces, inputs and outputs are validated. And there it is, openpower.xyz, you can see the build, and it's cool because the binaries are there too, right? The, the output of it. So if you ever wanted to actually just take the, uh, the QEMU image, you could just go there. And then you can go grab the Palmetto image, uh, the binary file for that, and say, hey, build this machine, and QEMU would launch. And so you don't really have to compile the code and to try it out. All right, so interfaces for this year, the past year, purple is the host side. 
Blue is the BMC side. So support uh, VGA boot. We support it. Uh, SSH console, we've talked about that before, as well as the, well, the open power stuff actually has an IPMI interface, right? And so there exists that IPMI from the BMC to the host. Um, but we recognize that there was a lot of people that said, well, yeah, but does it support IPMI remote? And the answer now this year is, well, yeah, yeah, where you have IPMI supported, as well as it would be great to have a front end to it, right? Instead of just a REST. Uh, if you're trying to out for the first time, it would be kind of nice to see something instead of discovering through curl commands what it, all this stuff does. So we're working on the, a web uh, front end as well. These are some of the features that exist on the BMC, the Open BMC project today. Um, some of these things I've talked about already, so I kind of pushed them off to the side. What I didn't talk about was like zero config, right? So you can plug the BMC onto your network and say, hey, who are you? And it'll re reply back saying, I have an Open BMC. And from there, you're like, great, now I can actually go into introspection. I can call REST commands to discover more stuff about it. Power control, remote console, IPMI sensors, LEDs, you know, watchdog, all the stuff that a BMC is supposed to do, right? Power on, power off, monitor the system to make sure it's healthy and wealthy and wise. Uh, these are some of the features that we're actually uh, putting more effort into this year. So enhance the code update. There was some. Yeah, it's just one way of doing the code update is just simply update the whole flash. Well, there's better ways to do it. There's more efficient ways to do it. And so we're trying to fix that up. Uh, there's the IPMI 2.0 compliance that we're trying to work towards, uh, verified boot, and the user interface. So uh, sponsor users. So uh, there's a group of IBM designers, not system level designers, but human designers. Not human designers, <laughs> but you know, human interaction stuff. And they are working with us. Uh, they're looking for some sponsor users, people that actually use a BMC's user interface already, right? Or have reasons, strong reasons why they don't like to use it. That would be great too. You know, we'll have a conversation, they'll interview, ask a bunch of questions, and what they're trying to do is figure out how to present a BMC's front end in a way that makes the most sense, right? We get a lot of people that say like, oh, I just want to do power on, power off. Okay, cool. Anything else? Well, if it doesn't boot, I go use the GUI. But I really want a command line. Great. So, you know, that's what we're working towards. So this is the thing. This is like the, the feature list that we don't have. And we really would like some help. And if you guys would, uh, with your companies, be able to, like, hey, I want to I wanna join. I want to be part of this Open BMC project. I'll tell you, these are some of the things that we're really looking for. Um, a por of course, you know, porting. You, the, your chip uh, set, oh, so your BMC chip, the board wiring for your BMC that talks to your board, that actually would still need to be done. But I think the, 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 the fundamental thing is if, if the open compute hardware management workshop wants to create a uh, Redfish compliance uh, profile, let's do it, man. Let's, let's get together and actually let's knock that one out. And you can do it on the open BMC. Why? Because then every, sub, every person in this room could actually test it out and, and use that code base on their system and say, you know what? That's right, except we need one more item that I didn't think about until I actually tried to use it in real life. Um, pretty much, you know, the remote KVM and uh, remote USB are things that, uh, there are things that BMC support, and we just don't have that into the code base right now. It'd be awesome if that would be helpful if people can help out in that area. Um, you know, ironic, from OpenStack, would, it would be great to have a standard format so that they can also get away from using IPMI for their communications. Um, QMU enhancements, um, and anything really designed like the data center. So the, the reason why we chose REST, a REST interface in the first place was because if you're dealing with a 1,000 systems, you're not using a front end. Right? You're using a RESTful interface to go and talk to the system itself. So uh, if there are designs and thoughts that go beyond what uh, is there today, then man, we'd like to hear about it because we'd like to make it, we'd like to make this thing so that a community can actually use it uh, and, get, and get the benefits of having all those ideas, all those eyes from the open source community onto you know, that platform. All right, so this is going to wrap it up. So get ready for your questions. Um, the code is here, github.com slash openbmc, right? Our continuous test environment is off of openpower.xyz. Uh, there's the mailing list. 
There's the IRC, and uh, there's a map to a, a, a new one called Riot. Uh, and sometimes we have IRC, right? If you log off, then my IRC goes off, and then I miss those conversations. Riot, for some, somehow, actually you know, keeps up to date. I can see it on my phone. I'm not trying to advertise for Riot. Just, it's kind of neat. All right. Whoa, 10 minutes of questions. All right. Okay, so the question was, is there a way for you to have the alerts that occur on the system be broadcasted out you know, to somewhere else? Yeah, right. So, right, it's Linux, which means you have the ability to add in that package that will actually go and do that broadcast notification. And I think Dbus does support a remote uh, host that you could actually have some. We haven't explored that area, um, but it's something that could be done. Yep. Yes? So we don't really have a real BMC, but uh, I'm just wondering if we just want to implement the REST API part, say how, you, know, you can manage the uh, PowerShell just, just like uh, you know, the server, you know, in the same sense. Is there a REST API guy? Is there a REST API? You know, yes. how, what kind of syntax, if we, we have something, how do we not, you know, is there a standard, say, okay, how we? Um, yeah, right now there, yep, there's a REST guide that's out there on the github.com, openbmc slash docs. You know, talk a little bit about uh, yeah, REST. Yeah, I, I see that, the Facebook yeah, documentation. But that's very... Yeah, not exciting. the other one. That, that's the other one. You will hear about that at 9.30. Okay. Right? So open oh, this v one is different? Okay. Yeah, that's right. You know, github.com slash openvmc. It's different. It's just different. Okay. And... Uh, um, so if we want to get some consultation, who's the one to talk to? Yeah, well, for, for the openvmc project, you can talk to me. Uh, after this, um, okay. you can go discuss stuff on the mailing list, okay. and there's uh, lots of developers out there that would love to have a conversation that you know uh, that goes beyond that server part, right? You know, there's companies making network switches, there's companies making power, you know, devices, and how much BMC do you really need? If you are willing to go to an A's, if you're willing to go to a chip that can support a Linux uh, boot, you know, then then you can get the benefits of Dbus. Oh, uh, we have an embedded Linux, so we have all that already. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, you would just be able to create the Dbus interfaces and, you know, actually remove the parts that have to do with a server. Uh, so I am working on an online document that talks about, like, a hello world for hardware, right? You know, how do you go about, thanks to Norm, <laughs> so how do you go about, you know, just getting onto a BMC chip and then driving a GPIO and turning an LED on, right? Not actually trying to boot the system up. And, and that would actually solve, I think, that would be the base point of where you'd be interested in because it does still have a RESTful interface, right? But it doesn't have all the, you know, state management of, of a system that's actually booted up and things, so. Thank you. Yeah. But. All right, um, any specific reason why your REST interface is not Redfish or is that on the roadmap? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so there's a real answer to that, and it's when we started working on it, uh, we weren't ready to uh, get into the Redfish, because Redfish was still at a you know, pre-1.0 release, and we were like, I don't know, it's not baked yet. We're trying to get this thing so that it is available. So that's the reason why. But we do want, and we will get, a, uh, we have been working with a university to try have them try it out and see if we could get Redfish rolling because I want Redfish on it. Because if, if you don't have a standard like Redfish, then the answer is always going to be, well, you could use IPMI because that's a standard. And I think we all want to get away from IPMI. We all want to move to the next thing, which is Redfish. And so, yes, there will be one, but, yep, you know, we should have had that conversation over beers, but that's what it really boils down to. It's that timing. So we'll get the redfish. Uh, you mentioned this is different from the Facebook OpenBMC. Can you just mention a little bit what's there's two different complete source bases or what's the what's the what's common, what's different? <laughs> oh common, well yeah, we both use the Yocto. Both of us realized, man, Yocto is the way to go. Yocto, you have the ability to point to different 
repositories. You can say what commit level that you want. I don't want to have the very latest. I always want to have a certain version. Um, I don't know. You have to look for yourself to figure out what the differences are. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Are there any performance numbers published uh, while running on an ASP chip? No, no, not yet. Um, and the reason why is because it hasn't been really top of mind. When we've gone and actually run the code, it, the code's been responsive enough that it's never been like, shoot, man, we need to profile this thing, right? And that's really the only reason why we don't. It's just the, it's a Linux version that runs on AST 2400, 2500, it runs faster on 2500. All right, uh, thanks, Chris. And that's it for this session. Give him a hand. <laughs>